Welcome to Unfiltered, powered by PointsBet. I'm David Kaplan. Justin Fields continues to amaze that there may be another budding star on the other side of the field. Coach Dave Wants that joins us to talk about the rise of Jack Sanborn, a guy who somehow wasn't even drafted. Plus, a legend is in the house. Marion hosts to talk to Jersey Retirement, his new memoir, and takes us through some of his greatest moments as a Blackhawk. And while everyone wants to be like Mike, an 18-year-old kid really was like him on Saturday. We'll show you how. It's unfiltered. It's powered by points back. Let's go! Here are tonight's top stories brought to you by Four Seasons. Heating, air conditioning, plumbing, and electric. It's official. Jason Hayward's time as a Cub on the field is over. Team released the two-time gold glover after seven seasons. Marlins make history. They promoted Carolina, uh, Carolina O'Connor to president, which means they are now the only professional sports franchise with women serving both as business op president and general manager Kim Ang. And a former college football player is under arrest tonight, accused of killing three of his former teammates on the University of Virginia campus. Police say the shooter opened fire on a charter bus full of students who were returning from a trip. Do you ever take a moment to pinch yourself and go, well, we went from an undrafted uh, free agent rookie to now leading the team in tackles? Yeah, I mean, I think, I think it's important, and I think it's something that I kind of learned throughout college is, you know, everyone is very fortunate to be uh, where they are, and I think it's something that you got to do from time to time because uh, everyone's so focused on, you know, getting better, you know, winning the game and everything that comes, and you know, because it's so challenging. And I think I think taking those that three seconds, five seconds to really kind of breathe, soak in the moment is a uh, is something that's important and um, something that you can take when you look back and be like, man, I, re- I remember that moment. And, um, you know, it's something that I don't know if a lot of people do, but I think it's something that's sometimes important. The hometown kid breaking out right before our very eyes, undrafted rookie linebacker Jack Sanborn having a moment as yet another young guy giving the Bears fans hope for their future. Another guy who likes what he's seeing is our guy. He is Dave Wanstead. He works with me, of course, on the football after show. Okay, the Sanborn kid doesn't get his yeah. name called on any of the three days in the draft. The Bears sign him. The best thing that happened to him was Roquan, Roquan Smith getting traded, right? Because he's been great. Well, I'll tell you what, Cap. He gets his name called out over the PA system for making tackles. That's what <laughs> – that's important. Right. And uh, I uh, – you know what? I, I, I do a show on the Big Ten Network, and I tell you what, this guy, following him at Wisconsin and watching him make plays as he has, uh, he comes out of a great program. He's played at the highest level, and and he's a smart guy. So he, he'll put himself beside special teams. He'll put himself. He'll make himself invaluable because of this year's experience as far as the Bears go, and other teams around the league. They're watching him too, Cap. They're they're put. He's got he's on tape for thirty one other teams now. So I, I, I'm so happy for Jack. I mean, it's it's a great opportunity, and he's seizing the moment. Coach, let's talk about the game that we all watched together yesterday. It's it's a game where you get done, and you're, if you're a coach, you think, how in the hell did we lose to that team on our field with a fourteen point lead in the fourth quarter? Then you look back at some of the mistakes. Do you take a different perspective as a personnel guy than you do as a coach, or are both sides upset today? No, I, I think both sides are upset today. Uh, the penalties are, are, were so unusual. That was out of character for our football team. You know, that the Bears have to play minimum or penalty free particularly so they don't get in third down and long situations. Well, we're most effective is when it's first down, second down, third down and manageable cap. And now you can use your quarterback run 
or you can hand it off, or you can throw the ball, or you can roll out. All those plays are are, are up, on, as we say. They're all up and ready to go when you're in that down and distance. When you give a penalty, and now it's third down and 15, you got no chance. I think the penalties took us right out of our game plan as much as anything. And then from a personnel standpoint, you know, Ryan Poles might have been feeling good because of what we're doing on offense. We're moving the quarterback. We're throwing screens. A lot of times we can all lose sight of the offensive line play. But when we were behind at the end of that game and we had to throw the ball and Justin had to drop back, it was like the first part of the season. He was running for his life. Thank God he's a great athlete. Or he'd have been sacked five times in the last, you know, in the last five, six minutes of the game. So we, we need to address the offensive line. And that came to light to me at the end. Coach, I want you to hear this. This is Matt Eberflus today. And you walked in his shoes like this at multiple jobs. Here's Matt Eberflus when asked about the officials being held accountable for missed calls. I don't think that's my uh, really my uh, question to answer. Um, you know, I, I think that uh, I'm here to coach the team, but I would say this: that that you know, there's things in the game that happen. You know, and and we as players and coaches have to over, overcome adversity. Adversity comes in many ways, as I said yesterday. And you, as a football team, have to look at each other now and say, okay, that's that. Okay, now let's move forward and let's overcome this adversity through execution. And at the end of the day, guess what? We still, at the end of the day, it was seven minutes. We were leading, and we should, you know, we should have closed the deal. So, coach, you've been there where you have your video guy clip off three or four plays. You send them into whoever Terry McCauley or whoever was the head, Mike Pereira. Hey, look at these calls; these are terrible. They send you a letter back, yes or no, and what do you do with that letter? There's only one thing to do with it. You throw it in the trash because I'll tell you what, Cap, at the end of the year, fans, owners, media, nobody remembers the plays. No one remembers players getting hurt. I learned this early in my head coaching career, and nobody remembers bad officiating calls except you, right. except you. So, uh, you know, it, it's uh, – it's a, it's a darn shame because I think it's been two weeks in a row now that we, and, you know, you, you see it happening. And I hate to say this. These officials are trying to do the best they can. I'm not saying that, but uh, I'm not going to get fined so I can say it, but these guys are human. And, you know, I'm, I'm watching that Dallas Green Bay game. How about the Dallas Green Bay game? How do you think Mike McCartney feels right now, right? Right. I mean, uh, you know, and, and, and you just had that feeling, you know, that – uh Aaron Rodgers and company that, you know, I don't know. I just had a bad vibe about how that thing was, was being officiated and everything up there, the calls. I don't think Dallas got a break. So it happens. You hate to see it happen at home. Yeah. The, the funny thing is the league came out today in the Buffalo, Minnesota game and said, yeah, we actually screwed up. Buffalo stopped Dalvin Cook by the goal line. In overtime, they had 12 defenders on the field. Of course you stopped them. How does that stuff happen? Belichick came out today and said, I want challenges in the final two minutes. I don't care how much time it adds to the game. We got to get this stuff right. Do you agree with yeah, that? I do. That's Bill's way of calling out the official saying, you know, in the last two minutes of the game, we can't. Everything is reviewed in the press box. I can't challenge you is what you're saying. I can't challenge the play. So if you guys can't get it right, then let me do it right for you. That's basically what Bill's saying between the lines. All right, so Bears and Falcons now Sunday in Atlanta. Next two games on the road, which means they're going to be tough, at Atlanta who runs the ball well. Then you got to go to the Jets. Jets are playing much better. And then you got to deal with Green Bay, Philadelphia and Buffalo. Like, there is no break in that schedule. What do you think of the Falcon matchup? You know, two similar teams. Two teams that are struggling on defense. Two teams that uh, have very athletic quarterbacks. Obviously, we know Justin. They have Marcus Mariota, who won a Heisman Trophy at Oregon, was a first-round draft pick. He's more of a runner than he is a passer. 
Uh, and Atlanta, the, the thing that the, the, the biggest concern I have about this week, Cap, is Atlanta is right behind Tampa Bay competing for that division. So, I mean, you've got a team, even though their win total isn't eight or ten wins, they are competing for a playoff spot. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting matchup. How do you flush the Detroit game if you're a head coach? Last thing I'll ask you, do you address it with your guys and move on, or does it linger all week? Like, guys, we, we gave that one away. No, you know, no, we, we definitely – there's a lot to correct on that tape, a lot to correct. And, uh, you know, on defense, I mean, we can't give up that many points. We can talk about penalties. And, you know, everyone wants to talk about Justin Fields' interception. I would say this. People, forget about that. Josh Allen threw three. The week before this, Aaron Rodgers threw three. Tom Brady threw one, and they they overcame it and won. Uh, you know, forget about Justin Fields. That's the least of your problems right now. We cannot give up 30 points on defense, give up a 14-point lead, and, and expect to win many, many games. So there, my point is, we all know the reasons why there's a lot to coach off of that tough, tough loss. Coach, have a great rest of your night. My best to Jan, and I look forward to seeing you later in the week here. Sounds good, Capper. All right, see you. All right, the Bears Lions were part of our big ticket weekend, which is tonight's tip of the cap, powered by our partners at Points Bet. A better put 10 grand on a six leg parlay. He played the Bucks minus two and a half, Giants and Dolphins money line, Lions plus three, Vikings plus seven, and Titans minus two and a half. That got him a cool $270,000 payout. Not to get. All right, let's take a quick break. When we come back, Marion Host of the Legend is with us. Need I say any more? All right, time for our stat of the day, courtesy of Ankin Law. It's the number 81, specifically Marion Hosa's number 81. You will not ever see it on a Chicago Blackhawk uniform again after Sunday. Hawks set to retire the legendary number Sunday night. It's the only 81 in all hockey to be put into the rack. And we get to welcome the man who wore it and won three cups in it in the Caps Corner, brought to you by Great Clips. Marion, back in our studio. I had you, it seems like, just a week ago, but it's been a few months. So it's here now. How does it feel to know 
that's my number up there. I mean, it's a, it's a special feeling and uh, I came to Chicago to enjoy uh, the whole week, uh, brought my family, my kids. Uh, and, uh, you know, first of all, it's great to be here, but I think it's going to hit me when I'm going to enter United Center that evening and uh, I'm going to definitely enjoy it. So when you were here the last time, I told you a couple of interesting stories. I was at a Chicago Bears game. And I'm in a skybox with a friend of mine who worked for a bank. And he's like, oh, I want you to meet my good friend. His name is Dale Talon. And Dale's sitting there. And I said, okay, tell me about the team. I know we get these good young kids, but we hadn't won yet. And he said, let me just tell you something. I signed this guy named Marion Hosa. He's going to have to get his shoulder fixed. When he's healthy, he will go down as one of the greatest players you have ever seen in the history of the sport. <laughs> and he was 100% right. How does that make you feel? He said it already, right? He did. Wow. Good for Dale. <laughs> Hadn't won a cup yet? Yeah, it's, uh, it's amazing. I mean, um, like I said, this is a special feeling. And obviously, you know, Dale, uh, I'm writing in a book, you know, he was uh, uh, the one who believed me. Uh, he signed me for a long term and he put everything on the table. And I tried to return the favor, right, uh, the best I could. And, uh, you know, the rest is history. And, uh, you know, we're sitting here tonight uh, and it's it's unbelievable feeling. Yeah. For all those early mornings in rinks in Europe and trying to make it and can I get there and then to think where it's at today has got to be an amazing feeling. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's uh, like I said, special, special moment. And uh, you play hockey to win a Stanley Cup. You don't play hockey to be in the Hall of Fame or you don't play hockey to get your uh, jersey, uh, go to the rafters. But, uh, you know, this is like unbelievable when this happened towards the end of your career, they start saying maybe your name could be in the Hall of Fame. I was like, you know, that could be unbelievable if that happened, but it's up to different people. And uh, obviously uh, this special ceremony coming up, uh, that means so much to me and my family and, you know, uh, Wow. Wow. It's a great word. So you have this book out and I was listening to you talk to Pat Boyle and Charlie Meliotis. And you said the day of game six in Philly, everybody's a little nervous. They haven't won <laughs> yet. Can we get there? And Jonathan Taves grabbed you by the elevator. What did he tell you? Yeah. So uh, that was right after lunch. So uh, we slowly going to the rooms for the nap, like always. And, uh, you know, everybody's like thinking already in a, in uh, about the game in your head uh, you don't want to but you are and johnny just uh, you know slowly just tell me like host in case everything goes right uh, just be ready you'll be the first guy i handed you i was like wow like what a confident guy right that. That, that, that is amazing like to me that gave me a little spark and i went with a big smile on my face to take a nap <laughs> and uh, you know a good thing happened a few hours later he gave me the cup and so when he hands you that cup first thing that goes through your mind is what well, uh, first when I touched it and he let it go, I was like, wow, the weight of the cup, uh, that's something uh, I thought it was lighter and that was pretty heavy. But as soon as I grabbed it second time, you know, I was like, ah, this is light. Pretty amazing. Yeah, that was amazing. Okay, so I, I told you the best game I've ever been to other than a game where a team won a championship was the game against Nashville when you were in the penalty box for five minutes and you came out and I remember you hitting your knees and your hands up and here is that segment, and I asked you about it the last time, and there's the goal. When you hit the ice right there, Joel Quenville says, if we don't win that game, I'm not sure we win the series and win the Stanley Cup. So looking at it again now with some time to, to think about it, what's going through Marion's mind right there? Well, uh, I scored lots of goals, but I never celebrated, never that way. You know, I don't know what I was thinking. The emotions and everything went through me at that uh, split second. But I think, uh, you know, God listened to me when I was in dressing room praying if they don't score, you know, on the power play, no, going to overtime. And, you know, lucky bounce to my stick and uh, I just have a half empty net to put it in, shovel it in. And I never heard, I've been, you know, so sold out since I joined the uh, Blackhawks at the United Center. But that building was so loud and I never heard them being so loud like that night. That uh, was the loudest, I, other than when a team clinched, like when you beat Tampa Bay to win it. That's the loudest arena I've ever been in. I've been in a lot of arenas. That was incredible. So you're in the penalty box. Five minutes, correct? Five minutes. Were you literally praying? 
Well, uh, on the beginning, uh, yes, uh, I was frustrated at the same time. Like I thought, you know, I would get a penalty, but not five minutes. And uh, that wasn't the right, right time to get a five minutes. <laughs> right. But uh, as soon as Kainer scored the big goal right at the end, when we pulled the goalie, I was like, well, there is still a chance, right? But I still going to the dressing room and praying in the dressing room because I knew there was like still like lots of seconds left to rest of the uh, penalty. And, uh, you know, thanks God the guys did an excellent job. They killed the penalty. I jump on the ice, lucky bounce, you know, I Ooh. score, boom. Pretty amazing. I want to show you another goal. This is against Tampa. I, not too many human beings could do what you did here, where you literally, with your hands, took it, put it down, score. <laughs> like, had you ever done that before? Uh, no, I never scored a goal like this. Uh, I mean, uh, the puck came in the air, so I just grab it and I try to, you know, just almost like the baseball style. Right. And I don't play baseball at all. So uh, I think I got a little lucky, but uh, was at the same time was cool. One uh, effect the goal right away. I never scored this way too. You had to be almost laughing there, going, "I can't believe I just did that." I know. I think I surprised everybody, myself included. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Tell me more about the book. How hard was that for you to like put it all out there? I've looked through it. it, it there's a lot there. It's awesome. Yeah, it is uh, quite a bit. Uh, basically, I wanna share lots of moments. Uh, because I'm a pretty private person, mm -hmm. so uh, people know me as a hockey player. You know, my fans don't know me maybe as a husband or a father. So I want to just, uh, you know, uh, share some moments. And I think there was right time to do the book. Uh, and I think it's great timing. And uh, right now doing uh, Slovak copy version. So uh, I think two weeks later, it's going to be in Slovakia also. And... Uh, when I started, I was searching like who should do it, you know, and, uh, you know, I, we were finding publisher. So I think uh, Triumph did an excellent job. Scott Powers, same thing. We worked two years when they told me, I asked them from the beginning, how long did it take to write a book? I have no experience at all. Mm -hmm. They said a uh, year and a half to two years. I was like, no way. It's like, uh, we're going to do it faster than that. Right. It's like, they were right. Two years. <laughs> it does. It takes a long time. Not all the questions that have to be asked, then you think of something, well, I got to tell you this. Exactly. Next thing you know, it's by the time they write it all, it takes that long. Yeah, time. it takes a uh, lot of time, but I think, uh, you know, it's good. Uh, and uh, you could maybe remember even more and more stories, but the book would be like encyclopedia, Correct. you know? So Correct. I think it's a, it's a fair and uh, I think it's a great book. Well, congratulations on an amazing career. It was a lot of fun to watch you play. And it's a lot of fun to deal with you because you're a class act. Yeah, thank you. It's fun to be here again and uh, fun to be in this special city for me and my family. When you walk out on that ice on Sunday, just look up and go, it was all worth it, man. All <laughs> those hard practices. Yeah, definitely. And, uh, you know, like I said, uh, it is always special. And uh, I think it's going to hit me when I'm going to enter the red carpet. And, uh, you know, when the banner is going to go up, then uh, I'm going to believe it. Congrats. Yeah, thank you. All right, we want to take a moment to talk about LSU true freshman Harold Perkins Jr., linebacker at eight tackles, two forced fumbles, and a school record four sacks in their win over Arkansas. He also had the flu, which prompted Brian Kelly to make a comparison that Perkins apparently didn't understand. He got sick before the game. I threw up and, uh, as we were going into our team meal, uh, team meeting. And, uh, you know, I said, hey, you know, MJ threw up when he had his greatest game. And he said, who's MJ? <laughs> I was like, man, I am getting so old. Okay. Look, you can't be that out of touch. MJ's only the GOAT. And for those of you who think it's LeBron, try again. Michael was 6-0 and in finals. He didn't gag to the Mavericks. Tap it off next.
All right, time to cap it off. Presented by our great partners at ChevyDriveChicago.com. My friend Pat Boyle is right on the other side of that wall. You'll see him tonight doing Blackhawks. And we debate sports topics and have during the 15 years that I have worked here. And he says Marion Hosa is the greatest free agent signing in the history of Chicago sports. Yes, I love Marion Hosa. One of my favorite players to watch. But Patrick, Patrick, Patrick. He's number two. Number one would be John Lester. He ended 108 years of insanity. He won game five. Three days later, he's pitching big innings in game seven of an insane game seven that the Cubs won. I'm a Cubs guy first and foremost. Marion, you're 1A. Johnny, you get the top spot, buddy. See you tomorrow. Take that.